All right. So the first item of business tonight is the request for determination of applicability submitted by Bradley and Randy Bean for construction of house driveway and yard near 81 Weber Road. And all of us were at the site visit, except for Brandy. Hi, Brandy. Nice to meet Hi. you. Nice to meet you. Uh -huh. um, <clears throat> and so I don't think we need to go through the description of the project or the site, We, except for Andy. You want to hear a description of the project in the site, Andy? You're muted, so I didn't hear your answer. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. Yes, I think it's a pretty straightforward project. It's just a house near a pond. I think you guys can, I think from seeing the site, I think you can fill me in what you think, so. Mm. Um, so uh, Bradley, Brandy, do you, anything you wanna say before we sort of discuss it and vote on it? Um, no, I, I think we're good and, and you guys all saw it. Um, I hope I gave an adequate description of the driveway and everything, but um, pretty straightforward. Um, just having that driveway go up along the fence. Um, yeah, um, nothing else I gotta say, I don't, I don't think. <laughs> okay, uh, members of the commission, any comments or questions? Uh, no. All right, well. Nothing for me, it's, as Andy said, straightforward. Yeah. So um, given that, um, I guess the proposal before us to issue a negative determination of applicability, um, does anybody object to that? Anybody no. want to propose any conditions to go with that? Nope. All right. So I put it to a vote that we will issue a negative determination of applicability without conditions, um, which means that the Wetlands Protection Act does not apply in your case and therefore you don't need a permit. So that's the, what the negative means. Okay, uh, I was like, negative, yeah. I was like, ooh. <laughs> <Yeah>. It's good. <laughs> sort of like a cancer screening. You like it when it's negative. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, all right, all in favor, uh, we'll do a roll call. Uh, Montserrat. You're muted, Monty. <laughs> Aye. Ann? Aye. Andy? Aye. Uh, George? Aye. Okay, and I vote aye, so it's unanimous. Um, it usually takes us a, a little bit of time to get all the signatures on the paperwork and get it sent out. Um, I'm assuming you're not in a hurry to break ground? No. Or are you? I, no, we're not. Well, I would like to be, but no, we're not. <laughs> okay. We'd like to start tomorrow, but it's there's a lot of other things to, to do too. So um, now we'll probably start in the spring. So Okay. So once we get the signatures, I'll, I'll send it to you. Um, you, once the, uh, the, 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 the determination of applicability is issued, there's 10 business day appeal period. So you couldn't start work for a couple of weeks um, mm -hmm. after you, uh, our decision is issued, but then after that, if no one appeals it, you're you're free to go forward with the plans as you uh, submitted them to us. Okay. Any questions? No. 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 I think we're good. All right. See, it's that quick. <laughs> that was quick. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank All right. You. No problem. We'll get that out to you as soon as we can. All okay. Right. Appreciate it. Thank you. Right. Have a good night. You, you too. too. All right. Um, next on the agenda is this uh, issue of expansion of the base state slash Baltazar explosive storage facility. And I'm not entirely sure all the entities involved. I believe that Baltazar uh, owns the property. I don't know if base state is the same or base state is different, but then there was another name that was in one of the I oh, thought it said that Bay State was renting the property to Baltazar, and it wasn't a change in ownership. I no, so. no. I, I think Baltazar is the construction company doing the doing the work. Bay State Blasting owns the property, and Maxan is is the larger company. They're trans. They're right, 
Right. Uh, there may not be transfer of ownership. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, <laughs> so I've been getting uh, CC'd on a number of um, emails that have been zooming around. Um, basically, a butters are objecting to that as an expansion of the use that should not be allowable in the aquifer protection district and um, that's inconsistent with their current permit and the, the most of the emails have been addressed to the the building inspector uh, but cc to the planning board zoning board and conservation commission uh, some time ago um, there was a question uh, you know, someone sent the same abutters sent me an email asking whether um, what they were doing there might be a violation of Wetlands Protection Act. And so I called the company. I talked to somebody there and they said that they were not expanding the road and the road area right at the toe of the slope is really the only place where wetlands come anywhere near the work that they're doing. So if they're not expanding the road, it's not likely that they're within our jurisdiction. Up on the hill, it seems pretty much high and dry um, without any streams or wetlands that I could see on any of the maps. Uh, and so the fact that, you know, that some of the complaints about this uh, have not been directed to the Conservation Commission directly um, leads me to believe that nobody has seen anything that would that they suspect would trigger our jurisdiction, but that as advocates for natural resources in town, we also have a role that's outside of the Wetlands Protection Act, which is to advocate for policies and actions that protect our natural resources. So, uh, it, you know, I, George and I started corresponding about this and then Montserrat had a question. And so we decided it would be better to just bring it up at a meeting and have a full discussion about it, about whether there's a role for us, whether we want to play any kind of role. Um, so my I contacted the planning board and said, you know, what's, is this allowable? The response was, we are not the ones that determine uh, whether the project is in compliance. Uh, they said the zoning board does that, but then the zoning board said, no, we don't do that. Uh, it's the building inspector that does any kind of enforcement or decides whether it's in compliance. I thought I read through the email. I thought it was like a storage equipment, not like for blasting material. I think it was just for the equipment materials. I thought I read somewhere. But there's, there's actually storing the blasting chemical as well. Oh, was it? The chem I thought because I thought I read the email it was no no blasting equipment at, at all i thought it was just no they said both they said they're storing both oh, um okay. and they're expanding the facility but only for equipment not for chemicals okay so that's that's, that's, that's my confusion okay yeah my my question after reading that stuff was how do we know that's true can any can can the building inspector go and and check out check it out and see if that's what they're really doing it's so, they're so um, they're so secluded in the woods there that they could be doing anything. Right. And but I think the building inspector has been on the site based on what I saw in the letters. OK, um, so I, they've either granted permission or there is some way by which they can get access. And it sounded like the building inspector concluded that this would require a special permit. Um, and so the zoning board is trying to stay neutral because they have to then, you know, decide way, you know, decide whether to issue a special permit and they don't want to prejudice themselves ahead of that. Um, George, do you know anything more about that? Well, the history is that, that there's been that uh, storage facility up there since um, I think 1981 when Paul Florial with his blasting business established it. Um, so long before zoning and certainly long before the aquifer protection. I think in 2013, they sold it to uh, Bay State Blasting out of Ludlow. Um, and there was a, a new special permit issued then. Um, uh, it was basically a, a continuation of, of what had been there with no expansion at that time. And there, were, there was no 
push back from any of the butters or, or the town at that point. Um, the building inspector uh, looked at that special permit and looked at what's being done up there. And it was his opinion that this is a substantial expansion and would require a new special permit. Um, he didn't actually say it in so many words in, in his letter, um, stop work. Although that, that is uh, what they should have done, I think. Um, and then apply for a new special permit. The, the letter that was uh, one of the pieces that Scott sent uh, from them states that they, they are not expanding anything. The one difference that um, does seem to be emerging is the storage of uh, um, emulsions, explosive emulsions. So in, in a liquid form, which, which is something new and something that has not been done there before is my understanding. Didn't they say they were expanding something? Expanding is space for storage of equipment and right. but, but not explosive. They, they maintain there's still nine, um, uh, whatchamacallits, bunkers or, or whatever they are. Bats or whatever. Yeah. Isn't there any other like federal or government agency because it's explosive, so they have to weigh in on it? Yeah, ATF regulates it. That's what, that's what it is, yeah. At the federal level and the, the state regulates it too. And I, I don't remember which agency. I, I just know all this because uh, Deborah is uh, co-chair of the ZBA and my wife, and um, she was, uh, she chaired it the last time through in 2013. Um, Scott Jackson had, or Scott Jackson, uh, Roger um, Lipton had to recuse himself because he was representing the Florials at the time. So there, there's a long history here, but but the point is that, that this, um, according to the abutters, um, represents a significant significant increase in, in the size of the facility and traffic coming in and out. Uh, Maxan is, is a much larger company than Bay State Blasting and intends to use this as their distribution point for New England. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's um, a big jump, yeah, sounds like a big jump. So, so it sounds like then they're claiming that they're not going to expand the storage for explosives, but there will be a much higher turnover. That's, there, sounds, that's what it sounds like to me. Yeah. 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 And the, the need to really expand the, the infrastructure up there, is that just because there's going to be more truck traffic and there needs to be room for, for vehicles? It makes me a little worried that some of the explosives will be stored in trucks on the site when when they run out of space in their in their storage facility. Yeah, well, that, that's that's a concern that I have as a citizen. I'm, I'm not speaking at all for the ZBA. Also, they're, yeah, they're moving those trucks a lot more dynamite or whatever explosives in and out. It could be more and chances. Moving moving emulsions in tankers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Don't mind my ignorance, job, uh, Scott. Do you mind pulling up a map? I just have, I can't picture this in my mind where this is on uh, Chestnut Plain. All right. Um, you know the driveway in between Paul Florio's house and his daughter, Lisa Moore's house? I think so. It's like a field. There's just a road that goes to the woods. Yeah. Is that one? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It goes way up in the woods. Yeah, I see it. It just looks like a road with a gate. I wasn't certain where what it was. Okay, now I get it. It wouldn't hurt to look at a map anyway. Yeah, I'm going to pull it up in the mass mapper. It seems like we could write a letter saying these are our concerns. Mm. Yep. And send it to everyone involved. Are legitimate, yeah, like I said, legitimate concerns. <clears throat> All right, so let me share my screen. Thank you. 
Oh, okay, so it's way up there. Yeah, so um, if I zoom out, you can see center of town. And then this is where Paul and Kit or lived, where Kit lives now. Mm -hmm. And this is their daughter Lisa's house. And this is the road that runs up between and up to the site. And I assume that this is the site prior to any of the work that's being discussed in the emails. And then um, in some of the emails, there are photographs uh, taken by drones, I suspect, or they may actually have been stated. Um, Uh, zoning map, that's not what I want. So Scott, you didn't share all those emails with us, did you? No, I just shared the documents. Okay, that's what I thought. Uh, maybe it was a link. Oh, it's in the email itself. All right. So So this is the site work that's being done up there. It's a little hard for me to to know. I don't really have a good reference to see what's new and what's old um looks like a lot of this dirt on the right looks like a little bit newer all that maybe yeah it sounds like they're bringing a bunch of fill up in there from what the email suggest um so you know we can write a letter i think the key thing would be to write it i guess we I would say write it to the building inspector's office and to Brian Domina and CC the other boards and just say that, you know, we're concerned about the increase, the expansion of use of that site and the potential, you know, with the emulsive explosives and vehicles that might be parked on the site for contamination of the, of the groundwater and urge them to ensure that it's in compliance with the the zoning restrictions of the overlay district. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay. Um, all right. Well, that takes care of that item on the agenda. The next one is, um, you know, I, I periodically get these, re, you know, emails from the building inspector's office that uh, somebody has applied for a building permit. And, you know, the Conservation Commission is one of a number of different boards or offices that need to sign off, depending on what the permit is for. So, if it's for like interior electrical wiring, we don't get a sign off request for that. But if it involves any kind of excavation, it generally does. So one came through recently and I was sort of scratching my head about it a little bit. So I thought um, I would just raise it with all of you. You know, that essentially a sign off doesn't say anything other than we don't see a problem with this or we don't have anything to say with it. But um, there's, we can also put comments in there. We can say things like, you know, be aware that there are wetlands nearby. If you're gonna work within hundred feet of wetlands, you need to come to the Conservation Commission. So sometimes it's just uh, approved without any kind of conditions. You know, if I don't see any evidence of wetlands anywhere near there, I just sort of sign off and let it go. Sometimes I'll 
add that thing that says, you know, the fact that I'm signing off is just a way of acknowledging that, you know, we may have jurisdiction. So you're, you're forewarned about that. So let me pull up the one that I had a question about. All right, so this is for, this is at 33 Egypt Road. And the description of the work is to install one five ton geothermal heat pump closed loop system. And so I have no idea what that involves. <laughs> so that was part of my question. Um, and then there's a, an illustration. So let me go back to sharing the screen. So this is what they've submitted in terms of the plans and the location. There is actually an area over here that's mapped as wetlands under the DEP wetland mapping. But that came up once before when people were considering to buying this house and I ended up going out there um, and it turned out that the wetland, there were some wetlands that had apparently had been filled but it was well in the past. So I talked to Jim Ross about it and it seems like that fill took place before the Wetlands Protection Act. Um, and so what I saw there was, is that there no longer were any wetlands on the, you know, on the edge of the open field. So it didn't affect the open lawn area, but there was some in the woods up in here. So oh, I'm trying to get the mass mapper site to come up. All right. So here you can see where there's this area of mapped wetland. And then um, if we go to the actual does that include the part that was filled scott yeah so is that the lighter the blue part yeah this part is the part that's like in the field okay um and so this is the dep's um wetland maps so you can see it just overlays completely on top of that and then um the aerial photo you know shows that most of it's in this tree lined area um, and you know this sort of shows some of it as being part of the yard but really there's just a very very narrow channel that runs through here and the, the most of the wetland is way back here there may be some areas that are considered wetland but it's really, really small and minor. And so the question is that since the work that's being proposed appears to be all within the lawn area of the home, um, does, does anybody feel like we should see this before it proceeds or whether this is something that would be a minor activity, you know, where a conversion, if you remember, you know, conversion of lawn to other uses within the buffer zone, like swimming pools and decks, uh, those are considered minor activities and it doesn't necessarily require a filing. Then when Waitley went through the Solarize Waitley project and there were lots of people putting in solar panels, we adopted a policy that we consider residential scale solar panels to be essentially no 
more of an impact than a swimming pool. And therefore, if it took place in lawn within a buffer zone, that we would treat it as a minor activity. And the, the, the regulations, it talks about minor activities such as, and then it gives a list of things that include swimming pools and decks, which means it's not limited to those. Those are just examples of activities that can be considered minor activities. So for me, I don't really know what's involved in putting in geothermal uh, heat pump. And so I don't know whether this would qualify as a minor activity or not. Does, does anybody have an opinion about that? Well, if it's saying or, that sounds like it's going to be some major earth movement to me. If they're, take, they're bringing in a drill rig, you know, I think that's going to be some, I mean, it seems my, you know, it's going to be pinpoint that it sounds like they're going to be moving a lot of dirt, you know. Or is it, I don't have any idea if it's, is it going to be as narrow as, you know, as narrow a hole as it shows on there? Yeah, that's what I said. It's not, yeah, I don't know. And how, how far does it go down? I would think to bedrock maybe, but that's well, I don't know. Yeah, so there's just, I don't know enough myself either. Anybody else have any knowledge about geothermal? I mean, I think this idea is you pump a fluid into the bedrock, and if it's hot, it gets cooled. If it's cold out, it gets warmed by going through the, the earth, and then that heat can get transferred to the building as a form of, of, of uh, renewable energy. Um, but I don't know much about it, and I don't know what's all involved in installing it. So. Um, we could ask them to follow with us, or um, we could just add that that caveat that says that if you're going to do work within 100 feet of wetland, and that there are wetlands that show on the wetlands maps in the in the in the within the tree line area, uh, that they should do a request for determination of applicability. Mm, I, so they would definitely mm, have to then, right? Yeah, I think an RDA would be a good idea because it's just so many unknowns and just close enough to the wetland. Yeah, I think the RDA is the way to go so that they can educate us a little bit uh, with um, okay. background information on this. My, my impression of this is that, that it's um, similar to drilling a well. Um, there, there are two ways of doing geothermal, uh, either, either these bores that go straight down or, or a field. It's um, loops that are that are at a more shallow depth, and so it's either vertical or horizontal. And the field is much more intrusive. They'd be digging, moving a lot of earth in wow. digging trenches. Uh, the bores go down 100, 200 feet. I, I know this because we we sold a house in Delaware that had belonged to my mother to to someone who put one of these in, and we watched as they did it. Um, mm. And it, it was similar to a well drilling rig. So about that, um, if you've seen your well casing, uh, that size or, or, or not much bigger than that um, with, with a pipe pipe loop in there. And it, it's, uh, it's similar to it. it, it it's, it's, it's connected to heat pumps and um, rather than an air exchange with a lot of loops within the unit, like an air conditioning unit, um, it, it's one long loop it goes down into the ground and comes back up, if that makes sense. And so it doesn't matter if it's in groundwater because I imagine they're gonna hit groundwater mm -hmm. before they get too far down. Yep, yep. They're extracting heat um, or, or exchanging uh, heat. Um, it should run both AC and heat. It may even be more efficient with groundwater because of the ability of water to hold heat. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. I, that's what I'll do. I'll, I'll I'll sign off approved with a comment that if any of this work is going to occur within 100 feet, that they be you know aware that they need to file an RDA with us. Um, the whole purpose of the sign off is to make sure that somebody doesn't think that having gotten a building permit, they are okay to go ahead with their work, uh, not knowing that they might also need to come to the Conservation Commission for an order of conditions. Um, so 
as long as they're notified that there's an extra step that they might be, then I think our sign off on it doesn't necessarily mean we waive our ability to review the project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do they know where the wetland is? Um, well, I can I can show them a screenshot from the from the mass mapper. Uh, I uh, let's see, can I do that in in the comments? Or not? Well, they, there's an email address, so I can always send an email to them explaining what we decided. And um, you know, if it's the people who who asked me to come out before they bought the place, then they'll they'll already have some sense of what the situation is. Okay. All right, I guess we're done with that one. And then it's just the approval of the minutes from our October meeting. Anybody want to suggest changes to the minutes, the draft minutes? Nope. Look great. Nope. All right. Uh, approving the minutes, all in favor? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay. Um, in terms of updates and other business, I think I've already provided all the updates I have as part of our regular business. Anybody else have anything to, to talk about? Nope. Uh, one one question on, on building permit sign-offs. Did do you recall whether you, you saw a building permit um, for number 11, Laurel Mountain Road? I don't believe that I did. It's the property that abuts, abuts us. Um, there's been a lot of activity up there. Last week, there was a procession of um, concrete trucks one day. Wow. And, and there's been a lot of fill going up in there. I don't know what's going on up in there. So um, this is something recent? Yep, yep. All right. Um, it would have, would have been in with, within the past six months, at a guess. All right, so Laurel Mountain um, Road. Yep. Let me see if. Uh... All right, so in the database, there are three things from Laurel Mountain Road, two of them from 32 Laurel Mountain Road. The other two actually are not on Laurel Mountain Road at all. I don't know why they came up. Uh, sometimes they come up if it's just the the address of the person who owns it. So you know uh, who the owner is? I can search on the owner. Long, L-O-N-G. Oh, yeah. There are some things in here. So um, 11 Laurel Mountain Road for installation and wiring of roof mounted solar. Then there's another roof mounted solar. And then <clears throat> installation and wiring of two Tesla energy storage power walls. Oh, that's it. That's Those are the, that's what it says for the, so it's all sort of electrical work or a lot of yeah, it. Um, they, they, they don't live here. It's a second home and uh, it's up in the woods and, um, and I knew about the uh, solar and the Tesla, but it, it's all those concrete trucks um, and dump trucks. Yeah. Bringing fill up there. Um, there are wetlands on my property that, that abut you know, downhill from there. But, uh, huh. It's I don't want to go up on the property without permission. And it's, uh, it's not something I can see. Well, you could always inquire with the building inspector to say that, you know, there's earth moving evidence of earth moving up there but no evidence of any permit for it in the database yeah or, or i could just ask them so. yeah right 
Yep. Yeah, but I don't I didn't remember signing off on any of that okay. and and it's all stuff that wouldn't normally involve us anyway. Okay. Well, with with the concrete and the fill that Yeah. Implies some excavation going on. So Yeah, and I think there have been things that have gotten by without coming to us because yeah. occasionally I think when did that house get built? I don't remember signing off on that house. Right? But it could be just my faulty memory, but I think sometimes it th that we don't get included just by by mistake. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Sure. Any other news or questions, comments? All right, eight four uh, seven forty. I guess we're done for this week or for this month. Um. I guess for our next meeting, you'll have to bring your own drink since we won't be at the Waitley Inn. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can always raise a glass at the at the Zoom meeting or, or cheer. All right. Thanks, everybody, for coming out. And we'll see you next month. Thank Yay. you. Take care, everybody.